Good morning, prayer partners. January the 11th, 2021. I am so glad to be back on YouTube with you with today's encouragement. We're continuing Start With Praise, Seven Empowering Prayers. Today's is titled, Learning That God Is Not a Genie in a Bottle. Standing on the playground in the fourth grade, I looked up at the beautiful blue skies during recess and I began to pray for rain. My Sabbath school teacher had shared the story of Elijah praying for rain and I thought, well, why not give it a try? If God made it rain for Elijah, why not me? I became a Christian when I was just four years old and thanks to a local church that had a bus ministry that picked me up and my sisters every Saturday and drove us to church in my little preschool Sabbath school classes I first heard about my need for a savior and to get to heaven because we could never be good enough on our own I have a vivid memory of the teacher's diagram of how we try to do good works yet fail because we aren't perfect but Jesus is perfect. All I had to do was ask him into my heart. Seemed easy enough. I went home and waited for the rare moment when my family of eight was not around, closed the door to my room, and I shared with a couple of other siblings and prayed my first prayer, asking Jesus into my heart. The more I went to Sabbath school, the more I learned about God and prayer. By first grade, I fully believed God would answer my prayers. In fact, I prayed that God would help me guess the number of jelly beans in a large jar at school so I could win a huge prize. The contest was for the entire elementary school, and I won. While I was delighted that I won, I certainly was not surprised. I prayed and God answered. Isn't that the way it works? Fast forward to the fourth grade. I was placed in a class with fifth and sixth graders. Maybe that was a good idea academically, but socially, that was a bad fit. I became self-conscious, especially of my clothes. After all, I was the fourth grader daughter, the fourth daughter in the family of six. I didn't have new clothes, yet I was surrounded by fifth and sixth grade girls who began to care about their appearance. Mind you, I was in the fourth grade, so a weekly bathing was still just fine by me. But I began to notice others' nice outfits. The teacher talked about Matthew six twenty-eight through thirty. So as the fairly obedient and quiet child I was, I prayed asking God to supply my clothes needs. Do you know the verse Ephesians 3.20 NIV that says that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine? Well, that's what I did. My sister's best friend had just outgrown her clothes and she gave them to me. I was overjoyed to have such beautiful new clothes. I went two entire weeks without having to repeat a piece of clothing. Although one day, as I sported the most comfortable shirt and elastic waistpants, a fellow student commented how much my new outfit looked like her pajamas. Did God answer prayer? I had absolutely no doubt. So imagine my surprise when a few weeks later, I prayed for rain and there was no rain. I was miffed, spiritually insulted, and determined to figure out this prayer thing. After a little elementary school level soul searching, I realized God wasn't like the genies on TV, especially the ones on the show I Dream of Jesus reruns that I would watch. Hmm, so why get God answer my other big prayer requests, but didn't let it pour down rain on the playground. 
Why did God show me with answered prayers that are more than all I ask or imagine, sometimes and other times not? It took me a while to realize it's not all about me. Shocking, I know. Reading the Bible every day and talking with God has changed my relationship with my Heavenly Father. From just asking for requests like he is a genie in a bottle to that of a real relationship. Ah, that's the key. Prayer is not present about presenting a list of requests. It's about growing closer to God and allowing him to transform us into a mirror of Jesus Christ. The big answer to prayer that led to my friends and I winning the prize home wasn't the contest. It was about God answering the cry of a child's heart so she knew that the creator of the universe loved her personally. Why did God answer my prayer for clothes? Of course, God loves to give good gifts to his children. But I think it is also it was also because I was praying scripture and claiming God's promise in Matthew chapter 6, 28 through 30. And why didn't he let it pour rain on the beautiful Southern California day just because I asked it? That was purely an intellectual prayer request. It wasn't heartfelt. I wasn't praying according to God's will. I was a child asking for, in essence, a magic trick. As I steadily read the Bible, God gave me deeper understanding of prayer with verses like 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked him of him. NIV, soon I realized the power of prayer isn't just for me. It can be a life transforming gift I pour out on others even without them knowing. I've witnessed God's I have witnessed God answer intercessory prayers for others over and over again, and many times without the person even know I was praying. As we stand in the gap for others in prayer, God loves to answer in his perfect timing and according to his perfect will. Sometimes we get to witness God's performing the miraculous transformation. Other times, we might not ever know this, this side of heaven, how a chorus of prayers buoyed someone who was down, prevented a tragedy, breathed peace into a chaotic situation, or brought someone to the salvation of Christ. Is a colleague having a bad day? Does the cashier seem gloomy? Is the school crossing guard frustrated? Pray for them. Remember, God can hear our prayers as we intercede for others. Who do you know that needs prayers? Who needs a to have spiritually to who needs to have scriptural and Holy Spirit directed prayers poured into their lives and into their circumstances? Throughout the day, remember to intercede for those around you and watch with expectation how God will answer in his perfect timing and in his perfect way. Let's begin with praise. Lord, I praise you for caring about the details of my life like our clothing, and allowing us the privilege to intercede in prayer for others. Confession. Forgive me for the times I worry and fret about things like food, clothing, instead of trusting that you will take care of my every need. Thanksgiving. Thank you for always providing for my needs. Specifically, thank you, Lord, for, and you fill in the blank with whatever you want, but I'm going to say my prayer partners. I want to say for life. I want to say for health, strength, daily bread. I want to thank for a life of transformation and devotion to the Lord. I want to say that because we're walking in the, these end times, these last day events that we see constantly, protection, direction, instruction, 
and that he's already made a way for me and he goes before me. Intercession. Lord, I pray, there's that blank, whoever you want to say, for my prayer partners, will not worry about what they will eat or drink or about what they will wear from Matthew 6, 25. And let's petition on our behalf, oh Lord, help me not to worry about what I'll eat or drink or what I will wear in this situation. Matthew 6, 25. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this prayer. Help us not to worry because you've already provided what we need. But let us remember that it can't just be intellectual. Let it be based on your promises. Maybe based on our heartfelt desire to pray within your will. By the power of the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy your day with Jesus.